This is uh, Lieutenant Colonel Francis Babe Hawk, uh, the uh, pre-war years. Okay, uh, your dad was in the Army, if I'm not mistaken. He was in the <laughs> Arizona National Guard. He was a captain mm -hmm. in the 158th Infantry. And did he ever go to war? No, he did not. <laughs> and was he, what, was his, what was his view of the military? Well, he was uh, very proud of uh, being in the National Guard. It, in those days, they elected their officers, and uh -huh. when he first got in, they elected him as second lieutenant. And <clears throat> he advanced very rapidly to captain, and then he was, uh, he was hurt in, in a fall, and he had to resign his commission in the National Guard. So growing up, the military was part of your life? I'm yes, sure. yes. Yeah. We used yeah. to go down to the to the old armory downtown and uh, watch them train. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the years you were in high school from 38 to 41. 40. 40, 38 to 40. Those are obviously, in, in terms of world events, were very, very important years. You had the Germans taking over uh, most of Europe. You had Japan invading China, calling for an East Asia code prosperity sphere. Uh, you basically had the rise of global fascism. Uh, what, to what extent were you aware of that in high school? Was that an issue? Not at all. Uh, weren't, we weren't aware of it at all. Uh, in uh, high school, we were in, also in high school ROTC, mm -hmm. and I was the captain in the ROTC because I was the uh, drum major of the band. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got to wear the captain's bars. And, uh -huh. and, uh, but that was the extent of, uh, of, of what I did as far as military is concerned in high school. Mm -hmm. And what, what was high school ROTC like? How often would you meet? What would you do? <laughs> we, we met once a week. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Would you drill, basically? Uh, well, we were in the band. Oh, okay, so the band was your ROTC? The band was ROTC, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. so. so you graduated from high school in what year? 1940. And that was what high school? Tucson Senior High School. Okay. The only high school in Tucson. And then you went to college where? University of Arizona, Tucson, Arizona. Okay. Now, talk about ROTC. Did, uh, well, again, at this point, was there, I mean, we're in 1940 now. Yes. Uh, we're not far from Pearl Harbor. Right. Uh, the Germans are taking over. Uh, again, any sense that you might be going to war? Anything? No, no, none at all. Uh, <laughs> being a land grant college, uh, the Air, uh, University of Arizona had mandatory uh, basic training for uh, freshmen and sophomores, so we all wore uniforms. And uh, <laughs> again, because I'd been the drum major at Tucson High School, why well, they made me drum major of the of the university military band, mm -hmm. and uh, that was my uh, training, and although we did have uh, classes in ROTC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then after two years, why well, you had the opportunity to uh, apply for advanced ROTC, and uh, we did that, and about 58 of us uh, got to be advanced military mm -hmm. and uh, got into then riding the horses. Mm -hmm. We had horses at the University of Arizona, and we had about 48 horses, and we played polo. Uh, at least uh, the good riders did. The rest of us uh, would like to watch. Were you the watcher or were you a rider? I was a watcher. <laughs> I tried polo, but I wasn't very successful. <laughs> <laughs> was it basically the kids who grew up on ranches? Yes. Uh -huh. Who played polo? Yeah. 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 Now, were these, were these do you remember were these quarter horses or thoroughbreds? Do you remember what kind of horses they were? <laughs> no, they were just plain horses, and, and uh, they even had to break them before they could use them. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Now, I know at some point in this, this interview you're going to use the term remount. <laughs> yes. We, we might as well define that right <clears throat> now. What's, what's a remount? A remount is a horse that's taken off the range and uh, brought into, uh, <clears throat> into wherever it is on a, on a uh, branch or in this case into ROTC and they had to be broken. And they were called remounts because they hadn't been mounted yet. Oh, okay. All right, so they're basically just uh, unbroken horses. Wild horses. Wild horses, okay. Um, so uh, you have mandatory basic training for soft, freshmen and sophomore men. Yes. Uh -huh. And then you had uh, voluntary, voluntary uh, senior ROTC. Advanced ROTC. Advanced ROTC. Yeah. Now, uh, what, 
take me through the training. How often would you meet? What would you do? That sort of thing. Yeah. Well, in September 17th of 1942, because the war had was on, uh, we we enlisted in the uh, Horse Cavalry Reserve as Buck Privates, and it was enlistment was for the duration of the war plus six months. This is what, what year were you now in college when this happened? 1942. This would have been your... Se 17th of September, uh, I enlisted in the Horse Cavalry Reserve. Now, were you a sophomore or a junior then? I was a junior. junior beginning okay. of my junior years, yes. Okay, so now now it's on. We're, we're now we, we're now aware that the war is on and, and oh, that yeah. we may be going to war. Yeah, this is uh, six months after Pearl Harbor, so... Mm -hmm. uh, now, <clears throat> now at this point, were some of your classmates just directly enlisting? Maybe oh yeah, in fact, uh, in fact, on Pearl Harbor Day, I was working at a standard station at the corner of Third and uh, and Park, and uh, <clears throat> I was uh, washing up the floor when I had the radio on, and I heard about the uh, attack on Pearl Harbor, mm -hmm. and it was soon after that why cars started coming in to get gas and to go enlist. Most of them going to San Diego to go into the Navy. <laughs> So that uh, that was the beginning of it, and <clears throat> then that afternoon, somebody raised a bed sheet with the rising sun on it, and then cut the lanyard so you, on the flagpole so they couldn't bring it down. It was the rising sun. Oh, why? Wow. I mean, that that would have been a pro-Japanese. Yes. Uh huh. Really. Yeah, that was December of uh, 41. Uh, who would have done that? Did we don't know, never did find out who it was. Uh, Interesting. They had trouble getting it down because they cut the lanyards that, you know, you pull up and down. Right. Mm -hmm. That was December of 41, so you were 18. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you just you decided to stay in school, and, and or was that decided for you? No. Uh, we, we were going to go into advanced ROTC. And as such, why we were exempt from the draft because we enlisted. Right. You had to enlist to go into advanced ROTC. Okay, well, so you'd enlisted prior to Pearl Harbor. No, 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 no. I didn't enlist until September seventeenth of forty-two. Okay. Mm -hmm. But so, but you, but I mean, some people decide to get in the car and go to San Diego and enlist. Yes. Uh -huh. You decide to stay and enlist in September. And con the continue the ROTC program. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what? So now, so now you know there's a war on, and this is not. This is not getting serious. This isn't just playing around. No. Uh -huh. uh, so tell me about ROTC. What 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 was it like? Uh, well, it was uh, actually uh, an honor to be in advanced ROTC. There were only 40, uh, 58 of us. Uh, the campus had about 2,700, 2,800 students, and more than half of them in those days were uh, uh, were men, and the other less than half were women. So they were being drafted and uh, and or or enlisted if they wanted to get into a particular service, but we being in uh, advanced ROTC, we were exempt from from uh, being drafted, and uh, <coughs> we went to class and then we uh, uh, rode the horses, and we did drills and uh, learned how to uh, how to uh, take care of a horse. We learned how to saddle a horse, how to maintain them and uh, did everything but shoe them. So we were fairly well qualified uh, in, in the horse cavalry ROTC by the time we were actually called a year later to go into the, go in to active service in June of, uh, of 1943. So what you're saying is what you did in college was really the same basic training that a lot of new recruits had to go, had to do later. Well, it was very, very basic. It uh, wasn't close to basic training because that's what we had to do <coughs> when we w got into the horse cavalry at Fort Riley, Kansas. Uh, but we first went into, uh, it was in June 3rd of 43, um, we took a train to Fort MacArthur, California, where we were in inducted and put into uniform, and then we took a train to Fort Riley, Kansas got to Fort Riley, Kansas, and there we went through basic training. Okay. Well, I want to talk about that later. I, I want to stay on ROTC for now. Uh, are those your ROTC spurs, or are those your basic training spurs? No, those those are after basic training, we were able to use those. Oh, okay, so those are later. Yeah, oh, you okay. had to earn those. So so you went through ROTC horse horse cavalry basic training without spurs? No, we had spurs. Okay, those mm -hmm. they just weren't the ones that were given no, to you? No, no. Okay. Um, 
So, but but at this point, sort of the, the air force at this point existed, but it was part of the army at this point, or it didn't yeah. even exist. Yeah, no, it was army. it was U.S. Army Air Corps. Okay, but but basic military army doctrine was still was still around the horse. The ground ground forces, yes. Right, ground force. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, what? How often would you meet to ride every week in school? Uh, once a week, we would ride. Right. Uh, For how many hours? Uh, it would be two hours. Okay, so that was your ROTC. That yeah. Was advanced, two hours a week, basically. Yeah, but we also had rifle training, and, oh. and there was a rifle range in the basement of Bear Down Gym, mm -hmm. and uh, we learned to fire the rifle there, mm -hmm. clean them. Mm -hmm. And there were 58 of you doing this? In advanced, yes. Uh -huh. Um, well, there were 58 in our class, and the senior class that my brother Tom was in, there were also about 58. Okay, so on campus there were about 120 guys taking ROTC. Yeah, okay. senior ROTC. Senior ROTC. And, and, and at this point, uh, were, you still in, were you still thinking, I'm going to graduate from college? Oh, yes. And, uh -huh. and then go into the military if the war is still going on? Yeah, well, we, we expected to get our commission through ROTC, uh -huh. mm -hmm. okay. advanced ROTC. Uh -huh. Okay. And, uh, uh, and at, at this point in your mind, was, was, was the notion very real that you might be going to war? Oh yes, very, very much so. We, uh, then of course after our uh, junior year and we were called in, of course we were in active duty then, and there's no doubt about where, what we were doing. Well, I'm talking about before you were called in. Now, did you think at that point, okay, here I am riding horses once a week, and I might be going to war on a horse? Did you really think you'd be going to war on a horse? Oh yeah, at that time, yeah. Oh. Once we got into basic training, we changed our mind. Right, but were you watching newsreels? You're certainly watching newsreels. Oh yeah, they, they would show them to us. Huh? Right, were there, were there any horses in the newsreels? Well, yeah, but they were show horses. Yeah. Okay. We, had, we had those back at Fort Riley, Kansas, too. Right. Yeah. Demonstration. Uh-huh. They demonstrated. Well, I'm talking about newsreels from the front, though. Yes, uh-huh. Yeah, but there are no horses in those. No. no. <laughs> but you were still thinking you might go to war on a horse? <laughs> uh, now, later on, they had horses in the, at the front in Italy. Uh-huh. On the... Uh, Tenth mounted. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, were you, were you riding remounts in in ROTC? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And were they nice horses? No, no, they weren't very nice horses. Uh -huh. In the sense that they hadn't really been broken. Yes, they had already been broken. Because uh -huh. uh -huh. we, we could ride them without any trouble. Uh -huh. They weren't they weren't that well trained because they'd run away on on guys that weren't uh, too good with horses. They didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. Uh -huh. did, they, did the horses were they did they fight amongst each other? Do you have oh, no, no. Separated? They were they were docile. They were docile, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. But they would they would grab the bit in their mouth and, and take off. Right. If they didn't think you knew what you were doing. That's right. Uh -huh. Now, were you stick? Did you strictly ride them on parade grounds, or did you go out? No, we went out in the desert. Uh -huh. On the desert. Okay. Yeah. But so. mostly we rode in the uh, uh, area where the uh, university hospital is right now. Okay. And uh, that it was a great big open area. There were no fences or anything. We did have a riding rink that was completely fenced, uh -huh. but the uh, riding as a troop, why well, was out in the open? <laughs> and did you at that time were you firing from on top of a horse ever? Not there. We did Not at there. Fort Riley. Uh -huh. okay. So occasionally you go out in the desert and the horse would just have a little fun and take off with the guy. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> would you? Would you? Would? Would you find him separated from the horse at some point? <laughs> no, I never did, but the, some of the guys would ride out to the double R, which was a uh, beer place, <laughs> and and put their horses in the back and go in and drink beer the whole time. <laughs> I had friends that did that. Really? Mm -hmm. You never did that, of course. No, did not. <laughs> Didn't drink beer. Now, what, what was your position? In, well, amongst your 58, were you an officer or were you a, were you a leader of any kind? Or? Well, we were all second lieutenants except the uh, ones that uh, were, in, uh, were juniors. Mm -hmm. And they were captains and majors, and of course the head of it all was a lieutenant colonel. No, mm -hmm. was the lieutenant colonel a, a faculty member? No, 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 no. He was a student. Okay. Now, who, who, who was the who was commanding it uh, above the students? Who was the commander? You mean the actual army officers? Right. Well, let's see. I can't think of who it was right now. Mm -hmm. It's too long ago. Mm -hmm. uh, colonel. Uh, well, Colonel Striegel was one. He was a lieutenant colonel who later we saw back at Fort Riley. But there was a Colonel Hopkins also. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but I'd have to get out the yearbook to give you names. Mm -hmm. and, but who were your student commanders, do you remember? Uh, well, I was one of them, and I was to become the captain of the mounted troop next year, on my junior year. But uh, 
there were several Don Don uh, uh, Kane from uh, Yuma and a uh, fellow from northern Arizona. I can't remember his name either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they were cowboys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they they raised, raised on ranches, new horses forward and backward. Right. But they played polo too. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. okay. And uh, did you have, uh, so you're, there were 58 guys in your class. How many, how many men in total in your class at the University of Arizona? Oh, at that time probably around 800. Okay, so that's a small percentage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So did you have a certain status in your class by being an ROTC? No, because a lot of the people didn't didn't look at it that way. Mm -hmm. Didn't want anything to do with it. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That, 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 was, that was for the uh, jocks and, <laughs> and people didn't know what they wanted to do. I mean ROTC was? Yeah. Or although, although we had, we had engineers and chemistry majors and... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. and uh, but so there were, there were over 800 men, wars going on, they haven't enlisted, they're not in the ROTC, and so they are just kind of hoping this thing's going to pass them by, I guess. Well, they were waiting to be drafted or, okay. or to enlist after their senior year. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. 